Thank you. Happy to see everybody here. And I'm going to tell you the story today of how I have gone. I'm not supposed to cross the boundary. <laughs> so I come back to the boundary. From these natural fibers to this new textile material. And what is probably more important is the journey between one and the other. And this journey, as it was actually quite rightly said, it's, it's my personal journey um, and a transformation, which I think is quite good for me, but also I think is quite good for the, for the earth and possibly a lot of us. But I like to start this story with two personal little stories. So the first one starts in Ireland, where I was living at the time. I was in transition. I had just left my first company. I'm a serial entrepreneur, so, so they, tell, they tell me. Um, after 15 years manufacturing and selling and designing leather goods, and as a result of those skills, I was doing some uh, consultancy work, a little bit all over the place. But I was feeling very itchy. I was feeling like there was something inside me that wasn't quite right, and I didn't know what it was. The only thing I, it came about is that I had to go back to drawing. Now, I had done drawing quite a lot in my life, but this was like, oh, why is this thing about drawing? So I went to see a wonderful artist uh, that I still know in Ireland called Sonia Landier. She's a Dutch artist, also living there in Ireland. And I said, look, Sonia, I don't know what's going on. I really should be trying to find more work, but I just have this thing about drawing. So she said, well, show me your drawings, which I did. And I don't think she was a bit impressed. She didn't say anything, but, but it showed it in her face. And she said to me, Carmen, you need to learn how to draw from the inside out. And I kind of went, what? Yes, from the inside out. So I said, well, can you teach me? I don't really know what you're saying. And she said, OK, come to me uh, to my garden. She lives in the country, and she's got the most beautiful garden. And it was springtime. Everything was blooming. So we went to a corner that was shaded, and she had a lot of ferns that were growing. <laughs> so you can imagine the ferns, OK, just starting to uncurl. They were quite beautiful. So she said, really have a look at those ferns. And don't think. Look. OK? She said, and don't ask me any questions. I'm going to tell you what to do. You're going to buy a new sprint, big. You're going to draw as big as the biggest piece of new sprint you can get. You're going to draw with charcoal. You're not going to draw with the bit at the, the tip the length of the charcoal, at least 15 centimeters, and as thick as you can make it, you can find it. And you use it as if it was a continuation of your hand. Now go home, come back in two weeks, which I did. And I didn't know what I was doing. It was actually like, oh, I was actually crying sometimes, not knowing what was going on. However, I did it. And went back, the first week I had a few drawings. After a few weeks, I could have about 60 to 70 drawings. I would go with my drawings, and she would empty her studio. It was very long and narrow, and we would put all the drawings on the floor of the studio, and she would walk around. Mm, yeah, something is happening here. Something is happening here. She, she may pick two to three of those drawings and say to me, look, something is starting to happen. Don't ask me any questions, because that's what I wanted to know. Go on keep drawing. So after months and hundreds of drawings, I started to see what she was telling me about. I started to understand what space was about, what volume was about. And the most important thing is that I was starting to feel so energized inside. It was such a joy to do these things. It was a new experience to me. But I learned something else about that. I learned I had to trust. I had to believe that what I was doing, not knowing it was bringing me towards my own future, or rather I was walking to my future by the doing of all these drawings. And perseverance, you just have to keep going, right? You don't know, but you keep going. And even today, when I've, I get to the limit, like here, OK, you can't go, where am I going to go? This little voice comes to me and says to me, Carmen, one more drawing, one more drawing, come on, keep going. 
um, wonderful lessons that I learned there. So let's go to my little second story. So we're jumping from Ireland to the Philippines where I was working at the time. And I was working with the design center of the Philippines. I was already starting to work with natural fibers. And we were going to see some, of, some weavers in the country. Beautiful path. This is how the Philippines is. And I was going with the head of the research department in the design center Philippines, another wonderful lady called Fe Gonzalez. And at one point of our walk, at the end of that is the village where we were going to see these weavers. She just bent down, picked some grasses, and she said to me, Carmen, what do you think this is? I said, I don't know. She said, well, I've never seen these grasses before. Maybe we can do something with them. Let's pick them up, bring them to the weavers. They live around there. They must know something about them. And bring them to the lab with the chemist and the dyers and the, the weavers. Maybe we can find out. Maybe we can use them for something. That was another wonderful lesson. There, there isn't such a thing as waste. It's a perception that we have in our mind, what is waste. Everything can be useful. That was such a wonderful lesson for me. I, I never forgot it. Sharing knowledge, it's so important. At the time, I was working with the farmers, with the weavers, with the researchers, um, designers. And it's not about what we know, but what we put in that melting pot. This wonderful lady, I said to you first, Sonia, she used to say to me, Carmen, you are building a compost heap. You're putting bits, 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 and out of that, something new can come about. It's about sharing knowledge. And those grasses, they look like anything, but in reality, they can transform into something else. So anything is possible. It's all in our imagination. So you may say, what has this to do with my product? Everything. Everything. Um, it's, it's about the journey, right? It's about the transformation. Um, I, in my experience, after working for 15 years with leather, I went to the Philippines. I started to work with natural fibers. But it was at that particular point that I decided, seeing the consequences of leather, which is absolutely not a sustainable product, I decided I am not going to use leather anymore. I didn't know where I was going. I couldn't see into the future. I had to have this incredible trust that something could or would come along my way. So I started to work with the weavers. I started to work with all these people. And slowly, I, I got to understand intimately all these different fibers that I didn't even know their names before going there. And one of them being the pineapple leaf fibers. This fiber, I haven't invented making something with this fiber. I, had, I, I made a new way of using these fibers. They have been used in the Philippines for 400 years. The weavers I was going to see in that path, they were using it to make hand-woven textiles. Very beautiful, very light, very labor intensive. They can make up to maybe 20 centimeters a day. It has to be hand-woven. They take one of these very fine fibers, they knot one to the other, and that's, that's how they hand weave it, right? But because of that, close relationship and what this other lady was saying, what about if we, what can we do with this fiber? This idea came to my head, which had always been at the back of my head. What if I make a mesh? To me, in my imagination, leather was a mesh of fibers, up and down. Our skin is another mesh of fibers. And because of the characteristics that I could feel in these fibers, I said, what if we can make a mesh with these fibers, not unlike leather? So from that, idea, a new product came about. It's called Piñatex. Pineapple. Piña means pineapple in Spanish and also in Tagalog, which is the language of the Philippines. How long did that take? It took me about seven years to go from that idea at the back of that place to a new product. Seven years of moving country remortgaging my house to move country, of course, a PhD, hundreds of tests, so I was again into the hundreds. Um, this is the first samples that I made. 
uh, what did it look like? It looked like a new material, but somehow maybe because I wanted to substitute this from leather, it looks a bit like leather, very, very versatile. It can be dyed, it's cellulose, it can be printed, it can be embossed, um, it can be soft, it can be hard, it can be flat. Wonderful. I was really excited. After seven years, I could really see what I was doing. A new material was born, basically. I should be happy. I should say, great, now I've got something. But, you know, I'm a maker, so I couldn't stop just having these pieces just this big. I was thinking bigger. I was thinking, oh, mm, I want to make a bag. I want to make something. So the next question came along. What was the next question? How can I industrialize this process? That's another story. That took another two years. So I went to see a wonderful person called Mr. Tan in a non-woven Philippines company in the Philippines in Manila, who already helped me to come this far. And I said, Mr. Tan, can you help me to industrialize this process? So she said to me, Carmen, I will help you because this is going to be good for Filipino people. And we're still working together. So what I show you here, it's another total milestone in my professional, my personal life. It's, it's, it's the first time that we realized that this mesh could become an industrialized process. Um, well, it took the time it took, soft, more dense, thicker, until we got to what it's at the right density, the right weight of fibers for us to move on. Um, when that came out of the looms, uh, this is really like, you know, the big machines, bigger than this room, 20 meters long. It was like, my God, it's happening. It worked. It was another wonderful miracle, really, to think that from these little bits, now we could really think, yes, we can industrialize. I wanted to go from the traditional, which I absolutely revere. I think it should stay there. I love to have those beautiful textiles. I worked with those weavers, but I wanted to make this for everybody. I want this to be an industry. So I should be thinking, yeah, great. But then again, what is next? I was working with 20 kilos, 50 kilos of fibers. And then I realized, my God, I'm going to need tons of these fibers, which I do. So where am I going to find these fibers? This, this is not a commodity. You can't go to buy pineapple leaf fibers. They, it doesn't exist. The, the weavers would be doing it tri traditionally themselves, hand scraping those fibers, but I couldn't really go. I could buy maybe 50 kilos. So that was the next thing. Where am I going to buy the, get the supply chain? Well, you just have to go and do the supply chain yourself. Now, this is another story. This is <coughs> my life and joy, the biggest headache ever of all that, the same for my team and the same to everybody in the whole supply chain. Um, it's happening. We are working on it as, as we speak. Um, it's incredible because one thing is to develop a new material. Another thing is to actually develop a supply chain. So I like to go a little bit into it to understand what it is. Number one, it's about circular economy. It's about using a waste from the pineapple harvest. We're using the leaves, not the tiny bits at the top, by the way, right? Those ones, uh, they actually plant them, so they're very, they're very uh, special. But these are the mature leaves in the plant. A plant has one pineapple and possibly about 30 to 40 leaves around the pineapple. Now, what does this mean for the farming community? It means extra income. It means that from a waste material, by extracting these fibers, they get more money. But by extracting the fibers, you have a huge percentage of biomass, which is the fluffy green, the, the part of the leaf that has all the nutrients. That can become natural fertilizer, which is the most expensive thing they have to buy. And also, when we have the volume, biogas. So you can imagine the circular economy. It's using a waste material and using every bit of it and giving it added value 
for the farming communities, which are the ones that they absolutely need more to have jobs and you know, the, the, the way to be linked and stay where they want to stay, which is in their own communities. It goes through two different processes. It goes now it goes into industry. Now we're going into the non-woven industry, as I showed you in the Philippines. And then we go into the finishing. So we go from that role that you saw to the product that you saw here. That's another technology, that's a textile finishing technology. And that happens with another company uh, in Spain called Bonditex, where we do what we call is our magic, is the transformation into a new material. So let's think about what does this represent? What is this waste? So let me tell you in figures what this waste means. We've got about 25 million tons of waste of these pineapple leaves, which are a waste for the farmers, are a pest. In some places, they actually burn them because they don't know what to do with it. Now, 25 million tons in the world. Pineapple is the second most popular fruit in the world, by the way. Now, if we just take the Philippines, which <coughs> grows 10%, is the third country in the world that grows pineapples. That's about 2.5 million. That would make about 180 million square meters of pineapple. Piña text, sorry. <laughs> like, it's incredible, right? It's, it's a wonderful thing. And if we think a little bit farther, that represents about 540 million skins of cows, just to put it in perspective as well, which is extraordinary. So I think the the reality of this is that it is really good for the world and it's really good for so many people and it's also good for us as consumers. We've got another choice of what it is there. So what is Pinatex about? It's about innovation and it's not just a technical innovation. It's about innovation mixing from the farmers, from the chemists, from the biochemists. This is that kind of innovation. Using textile technology that is there already, we haven't invented, actually we are developing now the first automated decorticating machine, which is the one that extracts the fibers. We're doing that with Chinese. Um, but everything else is there. But we're putting it together and blending it in a way that helps us to create this supply chain. It's about economic value for everyone throughout the supply chain. And this is absolutely very important. And this is what Pinatex really holds within itself. And it's obviously about better use of resources. We're using, we're using a waste material. We're not using any land, any water, any fertilizers to have the raw material for our Pinatex, which is quite extraordinary if you think. I'm going to finish with a little video, which is just about less than one minute. That is not ours, but it, it comes, it, encapsulates what we're talking about. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Naudis, and thank you all of you. <laughs>